What's up, everybody? This is Corey from Invest Like an Old Man. And as always, thank you for taking time to watch my videos. I hope that I can educate you and inform you on some topics that you may have questions about. And today's topic is, is real estate a good investment right now? Um, before I get into that, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it. Obviously, I want as many people to watch the video as possible. Um, you know, I want to make sure that my message reaches people because my goal is to educate and inform based on my experience um, that I have uh, with investing in real estate as well as the stock market. So um, a lot of people are, you know, on the real estate bandwagon right now and they have been for the past year. And uh, people that know I invest in real estate ask me things like, you know, is real estate a good investment? Um, and some try to tell me, you know, that it is a great investment right now. And, you know, the short answer is it, it just all depends. It depends on what your individual goals are. Um, it depends on uh, when you use the word investment, are you talking about flipping a property, renting a property, or uh, living in the property and hoping that it appreciates over time? And so depending on what your goal is and how long you plan on you know, owning the home, that's going to determine whether real estate is a good investment or not. The first thing we got to talk about, though, is why um, real estate is uh, doing really well right now. What, what's causing the prices of homes to soar? And there are a variety of factors, but, you know, there are probably three main ones that are causing it to soar. So the first thing I would uh, say is real estate interest rates for the past few years have been extremely low. And when you have cheap money, what that means is more people are able to qualify for a higher loan than they would have been previously. So if the rate's four and a half or five percent and it drops to two and a half, two point seven five that borrower can now qualify for a lot more. So for example, someone that may have qualified for 200,000 when the rates were higher may qualify for 250 or 260 with rates this low. So, you know, that puts a lot more buyers into the market for homes that they may have otherwise not qualified for. So we can't discount the uh, fact that the rates have played a huge part um, in what's been happening in the real estate market. Whenever you have cheap money, you're gonna have more people um, you know, looking to take advantage of that. And in many cases, you know, it's a good idea to do it um, when you can get really low rates. The other thing is uh, limited inventory. And that's another huge thing that's going on. There is definitely has been a seller's market for a while. And again, that's for a variety of reasons, right? So um, let's start with uh, why I think there's limited inventory. Well, there's been a moratorium on foreclosures for a long time. Some of those just expired. There was a moratorium on evictions. Some of those just expired. But when the pandemic happened, the government didn't want um, homeowners that have been impacted by um, COVID, you know, due to no fault of their own, to be uh, losing their homes if they lost their job or, you know, they were laid off. The government wanted to make sure they stepped in and didn't allow banks to foreclose on homes. And uh, that kept a lot of people who otherwise, you know, might have gotten foreclosed on before the pandemic happened. So you think about it, there's always a certain number of foreclosures every year, regardless of whether we have a pandemic. Well, when you put those rules in place, those people who otherwise would have been foreclosed on get to stay in their house longer, in many cases, not pay the mortgage. And uh, though that's inventory that would have been on the market, um, that in many cases would have lowered the overall value because um, typically those homes don't get fixed up and typically a foreclosure, um, you know, is going to sell for less than a house that's fully fixed. So um, that is obviously a major reason. Another reason is uh, there have been shortages on the supply side. So I don't know if you remember early on in the pandemic, if you wanted to go to the store and get wood, you couldn't even get wood um, for a new deck or for your backyard. And if you could get it, it cost an arm and a leg. It cost a lot more to purchase wood and build a deck than it did in previous years. And so even, you know, if factory shut down for a couple of months, when you're used to a certain amount of uh, supplies that are coming in and out and it shut down for a few months due to COVID because of laws in certain areas, then that kind of blocked the supply chain where you couldn't get the materials. Um, the third reason ties directly into this. Um, when you, the government gave stimulus checks to, you know, most Americans, you know, households that had an adjusted income of 150000 um, received uh, stimulus checks, and they received a certain amount based on uh, how many kids they had. And they did that multiple times. So for a lot of people, if you think about it, they didn't have a loss of income. They probably didn't have to drive to work. So if you uh, 
com you take the combination of cheap rates and then stimulus checks, many of these people who were considering moving now got an influx of money and they decided now is the time that they want to go ahead and you know make the move and uh, purchase a new home, right? The other side of that coin, when I talked about supply chain, I said you had factories that were closed down for months and you know even when they opened they had may have had trouble um, getting uh, enough workers to meet the demand the demand skyrocketed so how many people do you know that got stimulus checks and you know got a new deck put on their house got a patio um, they did something around their house they renovated their kitchen or bathroom well all that free money just increased the demand on a system that already couldn't meet um, you know, what they were previously doing before the pandemic happened. So you add up all those things. So that meant that, you know, it might take longer or cost more to get a new construction home um, than it would have cost a year ago. I know people who, you know, looked at homes last year and, you know, it might have been $80,000 more to build that exact same home. Um, and, and part of that's the builder taking advantage of, you know, real estate prices skyrocketing, knowing that they can sell for a certain price. But others, the other part of that is just that their supplies do cost more um, this year than it did last year based on all of the demand constraints that we've had. So those are the reasons why real estate um, has been extremely elevated and, and done well. Now, we have to ask ourselves how much of those factors are going to continue into the near future and, and, and definitely into the long term future. Right. So rates may stay low for an extended period of time. And. What I mean by that is, you know, over the next couple of years, um, the feds may raise them because we've had really high inflation. But the truth is, none of us really know um, what's going to happen with that. But I, but I think it's safe to say that um, rates are probably not going to significantly increase, you know, over the next couple of years. So they'll still remain um, fairly low by historical standards, even if they're, you know, a percentage point higher than, you know, where they are now. A rate under 4% is still a good rate. So, you know, that's one factor um, that is, you know, working in favor of real estate. The other factor about limited inventory, now that's where I think things get tricky. Um, I do think you're going to have an influx of homes that have come in on the market that have been backlogged from foreclosures that couldn't happen, um, from people who are landlords who own properties that couldn't evict a tenant. So, Therefore, you know, they may not have felt comfortable putting it on the market or not been able to put it on the market. Now they will be able to get those tenants out that weren't paying and the bank will be able to foreclose on property. So um, I don't think there's going to be a long term, um, you know, limited inventory um, that's going to weigh on it. So still got decent rates, but they're probably going to go higher. This limited inventory is definitely going to uh, change. Um, and one thing I want to speak about that is here's what happens when you have limited inventory. When you have 50 people looking to buy a house, but there's only 25 houses for sale, then what happens is it creates bidding wars because people have to make a decision. Am I going to wait, you know, an extended period of time until more inventory comes available, or am I going to try to purchase a home now? And if we're all competing for the same properties, then what's happening is you're getting people who are making all cash offers because they're, you know, either have the cash they have a line of credit or they withdraw from their 401k and they're doing anything to make their offer more attractive. You have people offering 25, 30, 40,000 above asking price just to make sure that they um, get the property over the other people competing for it. You have people waiving inspections, um, which means they're willing to purchase a house without not without knowing what's wrong with it. Or maybe they find out what's wrong with it and the seller says, too bad. If you want to buy it, I'm not fixing it. You buy it the way it is. Those are not normal market circumstances, right? Obviously, as a real estate investor, I purchased several properties, but I also was a realtor years ago. And waiving inspection fees and offering way over asking price are not things that happen in a normal um, market and a stable market. Those are things that happen when people panic and they get caught up in the excitement that happens whenever you have a bubble, whether that's real estate, crypto, even the gold rush back in the days. Um, you get people who feel like uh, they're going to miss out, so they're willing to almost do anything to, you know, make sure that they don't miss out on the opportunity. Uh, but I always tell people there are going to be more opportunities to come around. So all those things led to the stock market uh, increasing the way it has. So now the reason I say it depends on if it's a good investment or not is all my friends that ask me, I say, hey, if you plan on staying there for 15 years, then buy it. It doesn't necessarily make a huge difference what you pay for it if you're going to be there for 15 years. Because we have to ask ourselves, is this house going to be worth more in 15 years than it is today? 
think it's safe to say that. I said, if you're moving in seven or eight years, I would not pay these elevated prices because there's a good chance that in seven or eight years, you may owe more than what that home is worth. And I will give you an example. I purchased a home um, years ago as a foreclosure and then 2008 happened. So I thought I had a great deal. There was no way I could lose on it. Well, 2008 happened and that house declined in value. But the truth of the matter is it didn't drop it so much. It just stopped going up. It stopped increasing in value. And so when I went to sell that house, I would have had to pay out of pocket just to sell it. I would have had to put up 15 or 20,000 just to be able to pay the loan back um, based on you know what I owed and what the value of that property was. However, I never sold it, I rented it out. And so now I've owned that house for a while and that house is appraised at 240,000. I owe maybe 120 on it and I paid 160 for it. Well, because I was able to hold it for a long term, I was able to go through that market correction um, kind of weather the storm and I didn't take a loss because I had a longer time horizon. And I would say if you're talking a really long time, no matter what price you pay for something, chances are in 15 years, it's going to be worth more. But if you think you're going to move there as a starter home and then sell it in seven or eight years, that's not something I would recommend to someone because if that's your goal, I, I think you're going to lose. I do think these prices cannot be sustained. I don't think rates can stay low forever. And all the factors that have led to this market going so high um, are not sustainable. So, um, you know, you have to ask yourself, um, is it a great time to be buying? Some people are selling their house at an all-time high, but you're also taking that money and buying at an all-time high. So, you know, in some cases it can be a wash. So you have to think about those things. The other thing is, are you looking to flip or are you looking to rent? If you're looking to flip and you have a network where you can get properties before they hit the market, and you're not purchasing properties off of MLS, it's possible that you can actually um, make a decent return. But you have got to get the, part, the uh, properties for less than market value. It's very difficult to pay market value and then flip a property. I mean, it's very difficult to pay close to market value and flip a property. And chances are, if you're purchasing something off of the MLS, it's going to be fairly priced. You have to have a network in place where... Uh, you see these signs all around when you drive around, we buy ugly houses or call us if you want to sell your home. Those people are buying those houses for 60% uh, of, you know, after repair value. So there's a lot of wiggle room for them to turn around and flip it. So if, if you've got a system in place to get properties before they hit MLS, then you could probably still make money in this market. If, if you're buying money, if you're buying them on MLS, unless you've got your own network of contractors and doing everything in-house, a lot of times it's going to be difficult um, to flip those houses, you know, when you're paying retail for it. Rentals. Can you make money with rentals? That's going to depend. I think it's very difficult to buy at an all-time high and still be able to make money. Um, I'm going to keep referencing the lower rates because rates are so low that it is possible that you can pay more for a property, but your payment, you know, stays the same as what it would have been had you bought that property for 20000 less a couple years ago and had a higher, higher interest rate. It's all, it's all going to depend on, um, you know, your interest rate, how much you have to put down, and uh, the rental rates in those areas. Sometimes there's a little arbitrage that you can take advantage of. Uh, so, for example, I have a couple properties where I could buy them. I make five or $600 a month on them now. If I had to pay full price for them and what they're appraised at now, I probably would only make $200. But depending on how much money I have to come out of my pocket as a down payment, $200 a month on a rental property is actually not bad. They're all not going to be five or $600. But properties, uh, the point I'm making is properties that a few years ago that I purchased that I was making that much in cash flow, if I bought them today, it, it would be half of that. So for me, I'm just going to wait it out a little bit. I'm not running out there trying to, you know, just buy something for the sake of buying it. I'm looking at it for the long term. So if I go a year and I don't purchase the property, then you know, I haven't lost out on anything. So I know I've been talking for a while. I've given you a lot of information. Um, hopefully it's enough for you to start to go dig. Um, if you have questions or comments, you know, put them in the comment section. I'd love to answer them for you. Um, I, don't, I don't consider myself an expert on all things, but uh, I do, I am a person that learns from experience. And I was in banking, you know, when 2008 happened. And trust me, those of us in the business, we knew that this was coming. We may not have known the extent, but we knew that it was coming. And I kind of have that feeling now. When I see all this hysteria around real estate and how high and how fast it's going and you know all of the 
crazy things people are doing to you know purchase a home. Um, those things don't make sense to me. They don't seem reasonable. They don't seem rational. And whenever a market isn't reasonable or rational, then that to me indicates that we're in a bubble. And I do not think that the bubble will you know uh, pop in the same way that it did you know years ago. Um, because I believe this one was driven by different fundamentals. But I do think we're going to hit a point where the real estate is just going to stay flat for a few years. Um, and the reason why I don't think it's going to burst like a bubble is because we have more qualified buyers that I don't think are just going to walk away. Whereas previously you had no cash in the deal. Uh, you know, you probably no income documents. And so a lot of people who already had poor credit, um, who didn't put any money on the house, when things didn't go right, they just walked away. I don't think that would happen again. Um, this time, so I do think you have a floor there, but I definitely don't think you're going to see the appreciation over the next six or seven years um, like we have. I think they're going to stay flat and in some cases have a small decrease. So um, if you have questions, comment again, like the video, share.